The night time is the right time for putting warheads on foreheads. Let's get to it. Stingray is town six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south and north, left in, right out. The following video is for entertainment purposes only. There will be no specific discussion about ranges, technical data, or aircraft survivability equipment, otherwise known as ASE. Questions of this nature will not be answered, and discussions will be deleted. Thanks. Alright guys, welcome back aboard the H-64D, and we're going to get set up for night operations. And the first thing that we're going to take a look at is our lighting control panel. So we're in the back seat, pilot seat of the aircraft, and we're going to look down here at the pilot uh, lighting control panel. You can see there we've got the external lights in a row and then the internal lights in a row. So we'll take a look at the external lights first. All right, we're going to start there at the bottom. You can see uh, it's kind of written on the side there. It says anti-collision. And uh, this is our anti-collision lights on the outside. We've got white, off, and red. And as you can see by changing to the white, we turn on the white anti-collision lights, which will be flashing intermittently on the left and right. And then on down, we can do the red and occlusion lights. Center position is off. All right, just above that is the formation lights, and this is a dial. And we'll take a look outside. We typically call these the slime lights. And these are used for uh, mainly NVG operations. They show up really good on uh, light amplification goggles. All right, just above that, uh, the last external lights we've got is our nav lights or position lights. And you can see that we've got a three position switch, bright, off, and dim. All right, working our way to the inside, we've got the interior lights and we've got a variety. We've got the signal, primary, standby instruments, and our floodlights, as well as our press to test. We'll go ahead and test first. So we're gonna hit that. It's gonna turn on every light in the system. This is what we're gonna do uh, before engine start. Just make sure that everything is working. And we'll release. And first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at our floodlights. And you can see we've got multiple floodlights across the cockpit. We have our primary lights, our signal lights, which will be for, for instance, our master caution, and our standby instruments. Additionally, for our MPDs, we can turn them down here at the brightness knob. And if we do have any video or map showing, we can turn that down on the video. For the UFD, we've got a brightness knob. And for our CMOS control panel, we have a lamp. For our HMD, we've got this video panel here in the front left of the pilot's cockpit. And we can turn down our symbology brightness here. And in the front seat, we also have a lighting control panel, uh, but only for the interior lights. The front seater does not have access to the external lights. And he can make the same adjustments as we did in the back. And for our HMD symbology, it is here on the T deck. The MPD's video brightness can be adjusted the same, as well as the UFD. Now it's important in flying night, uh, whether we're using our HMD with the FLIR or we're using night vision goggles, to uh, go ahead and turn down the lighting as much as you can in the cockpit that you can uh, tolerate uh, because it does become a bit of a distraction. And of course, as the night goes on, you might adjust these things uh, a little bit more to taste depending on the situation. But go ahead and set your lights low and let your eyes start getting adjusted to the darkness. All right, now that we've got our lighting set to taste, we are going to get started on the NVS mode. Uh, there's a couple things I recommend that you have mapped. Uh, one is the NVS mode select switch. Uh, right here, it's located on the left side of your cockpit. Uh, same with the front seater. And as well as you can look at your collective, and you're gonna wanna look at the polarity switch, as well as the site select switch. 
All right, so when we slip this uh, NVS mode switch to norm, what's going to happen is the pinvis, which is located up here on the nose of the aircraft, is going to become active. And we're going to start seeing that video relayed into our HDU. Now, since we're in the back seat, we're the pilot, uh, we're going to default to getting the pinvis, whereas the front seat of the CPG is going to default to getting the TADS. Uh, main difference is that the uh, slew rate for one is double the other. So the pinvis is about 120 degrees per second, and the TADS is about 60. Uh, but they both have FLIR. Uh, the FLIR can be adjusted. They're both going to get flight symbology. So we're going to go ahead and flip this switch to norm. And you can see that the pinvis immediately comes to life and is uh, tracking my head uh, based on my HDU. All right, so we talked about that polarity and sight select. So I've got that sight uh, select switch here on my collective. And if I push it to the forward position, what I'm gonna do is take the TADS from the CPG. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see that something has changed, but it looks kind of the same, but I'm gonna move my head that same speed that I did before, you can see that the TADS is a lot slower, having a harder time keeping up with me. So that's something to consider if you are using the TADS, that six degree slew uh, is uh, pretty slow. You gotta be very deliberate with your head movement. All right, so on that same switch, we're gonna go backwards to the back and that's gonna give me back the pinvis. And we're gonna go ahead and check our polarity. And we've got black hot and white hot. All right, once we have the Penvis on, we can make some adjustments here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see through the Penvis, but we've got this video panel and we've got some various dials here. So for our iHads, we've got the brightness and contrast, which changes just the overall HDU iHad system brightness and contrast. Uh, we've got the symbology brightness, so that's gonna change the symbology there in the center and on the edges. And then we have the level and gain control for the FLIR. Now here we have the automatic contrast mode. I don't believe that it's working in this early access. It might be by the time that the, uh, the module launches. Uh, but these are things that I will probably try to find a way to map, uh, at least with the FLIR and the symbology brightness, so that I can uh, make these changes on the fly. Uh, as it does uh, change based on you know altitude and conditions, you might want to make some adjustments. Now I've repositioned the aircraft because there is one thing that I want to demonstrate for you and that is how things are going to look differently when you're using the night vision sensor. And again, remember these are located on the front of the aircraft on the nose. Uh, so essentially your right eye is uh, going to be in a different location than your normal right eye as you're looking around. So what do I mean? So right off the nose, uh, we can see that there's that radar dish or whatever that thing is. So we're going to turn off the HDU and we can see uh, that item. It's, it's basically in the same exact spot. Now we're going to turn and look 90 degrees or so off to the left and you can sort of see uh, that we've got this tree showing up in our pinvis but we've also got the same tree showing off to the right with our unaided eye. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to turn off the HDU. So now we're completely unaided. We can see that tree very clearly. We turn on the HDU and it's in a different spot and that is, uh, is because again that sight is up there on the uh, or that sensor is up there on the nose and so when you turn your head to the left or to the right uh, you're essentially moving your eye to a different location right so that's about 10 feet or so ahead of you at about three feet or so below your head so things are gonna look a little bit different now at range uh, you don't really notice it as much uh, but it is uh, just something important to understand that if you're hovering close uh, to something, you may get that uh, that parallax uh, vision between the objects that you're looking at. Now, in a real aircraft, what I would sometimes do is just kind of close my left eye uh, and and ignore it, or uh, or you know you could just turn off the sensor depending if it's a if it's a bright night. So, but just something to be aware of. And another thing at night that's important is your symbology. Uh, it may be a super dark night. Uh, this is actually pretty bright. Um, but uh, picking up the aircraft, we're going to be spending a little bit more time paying attention to our symbology and using that hover symbology to keep us in location because we, we don't have as much peripheral view as we're used to. It's a little bit harder to look outside. And, of course, moving your head always seems to uh, cause your, your hands to want to follow. So... Uh, you're going to spend a little bit more time understanding that symbology and using it to refine your hovering uh, in particular, especially at a high hover. And don't forget that uh, you've got that hover bob up mode where you can use that box. And we'll just try and keep our acceleration cue inside the box. And that'll keep us located right where we dropped that box originally. 
All right, normally flying at night can be pretty challenging, but with the symbology and with the penvis, it makes it uh, almost as easy as flying during the day. The only real challenge you have is just uh, understanding that your head motion needs to be a little bit more uh, slow and deliberate, and but also that your uh, field of view is, a, is, is very narrow compared to what you can normally see. Uh, but that flight path vector is going to be very important uh, as long as you keep it roughly above the terrain. Uh, you know that you're going to clear it and uh, basically it's going to give you the location of the crash. So if you've got it pointed at a tree or a tower or the ground, uh, if you don't make some changes, that's where the aircraft's going to end up. All right, I've jumped into the front seat and we've got uh, my buddy George uh, holding us here at a, a 40 knots. Uh, and he's going to hopefully maintain our altitude for us. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my night vision sensor. And, of course, now I have the TADS, and I know that because it's so slow to keep up with my head. Now, there's different ways to, to handle things at night when you're when you're hunting and, and doing good uh, co-pilot gunner stuff. Uh, if we've got the sensor uh, selected as a night vision sensor, we're using our TADS, it's going to give us all the same type of information that we're getting from the PENVAS, meaning we're getting the flight symbology and we're getting the FLIR. However, if I did find a target, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, TADS as my sight, and nothing is happening. And that is because, again, I said earlier, uh, once we select the aircraft uh, sensors as our night vision, uh, it's going to default to that. That means we can't, uh, we can't override that. We've got to turn it off because the aircraft thinks that right now we're using this to fly. Flying is the most important thing, and we need to keep the aircraft up in the air. So uh, the only way to get our sight is we're going to go ahead and turn the NVS off. Now I'm going to select sight, and you can see that I have control of the TADS. So uh, different ways that we can be looking around as the co-pilot gunner. We can be using the thumb force controller just like I am now. So now I am moving the TADS around. You can see instead of the flight symbology, I now have the uh, weapon symbology. So I can start looking around for targets this way, or I can sort of cheat the system. I can go over here to my acquisition, set my gunner's helmet sight as acquisition, and I'm going to hit the slave button. And now you can see that little crosshair is actually my line of sight, and the TADS is working to stay slaved to my line of sight. So as I move my head, again that's 60 degree uh, per second limitation, the TADS is going to follow my head. So instead of the flight symbology, I now just have the weapon symbology. Uh, what else I can do though is now I can actually zoom in on things and look at it with my head. So we're out hunting, we're looking for stuff. If I see something interesting, I can zoom in on it, keep looking with my head. If I find something interesting, I can laze and store. Uh, also what I can do is just hit the slave button. So let's say I see this uh, interesting tower here. I'm going to deslave, and now I have thumb force control of the TADS, and I can move my head, and it's not affecting the TADS at all. Now this is where things can get a little bit screwy for people, uh, depending on what you like to do as far as do you like to use the HDU or do you like to use the TDU. Because as you can see right now, we've got a, a lot of stuff in our eyeball. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, light and different views and stuff. So at night I typically did use the HDU, uh, but I also during the day like to use the TDU. So there's different ways we can do this. If we wanted to use the TDU primarily, we could just move the iHads out of our way and focus in on our TDAC display unit and use that to control the TADS. Another way is we could bring up our HDU and we could turn off the TDU. Or we can leave the TDU on, put it on night mode, and just mess with the brightness and turn it down a little bit. Now one thing to keep in mind with the FLIR is we can control the level and the gain. In the front seat we're going to be using these knobs here on the TDAC, and in the back seat we'll be using the uh, control panel, uh, same place where we did the uh, brightness for our HDU. Alright, so we're in the back seat, and down here at the video we can turn down the IHADS brightness and contrast, but we can also turn down the FLIR level and gain. Now typically you're going to set these before you take off to something that's acceptable, and then after a while in the flight your eyes are going to start to adjust to the, the color change, and you'll probably uh, mess with those just a little bit more, particularly for a long flight. So uh, don't be afraid to go back and uh, kind of mess with those settings as well until you get the perfect picture. Also since it's FLIR, there's one other option we can have that's on our collective, and that is to change the polarity of the FLIR. 
Uh, so we can change to uh, black, hawk, black Hot and White Hot. And uh, again, this is uh, to your taste. I know some guys uh, like to fly with White Hot and hunt with Black Hot or vice versa. So, you know, whatever works for you. And of course, in certain environments, uh, sometimes the Black Hot works better than the White Hot and vice versa. All right, and the last thing that we'll cover is how the Penvis can be used. Uh, so you'll notice that I can actually look down through the aircraft right now. Uh, and it can be a little uh, disconcerting if you've got all your lights up real bright like I do right now. This is another reason that we want to turn them down in flight. Uh, but you can see that my flight path vector, uh, we're just going to put it down here on the ground. And we've got a pretty steep approach right now. Uh, if I turned off my HDU, I can't even see where I'm going. But I've turned the HDU back on and I can see right where I'm going. I can control my descent. And this is a technique that Apache pilots will even use during the day. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from turning on the FLIR. Uh, and if things get a little bit crazy, I used to just kind of squint my left eye and close it and then just focus on the screen. Uh, but again, turning down your lights will help with this. And just uh, taking it slow and steady, use that flight path vector to tell you where you're going. And we've got our saturation back into the hover mode. And we'll go ahead and land. So as you can tell, the Penvis and the TADs, uh, having the integrated FLIR uh, can make this a very formidable night fighter, uh, something that DCS has sorely missed when it comes to helicopters. So I'm really excited to see you guys out there doing some night fighting and uh, lazing and blazing, putting warheads on foreheads. I hope you guys enjoy this series, that it's been helpful for you. And of course, we'll do more videos as uh, time goes by. Uh, it's been my honor to work with Eagle Dynamics and bring this uh, system to life for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later. Take it easy.